What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got a book that I'm going to open here that I am speculating on. I'm going to talk about why I think this is such a good book, and this should give you some tips to help with any speculation that you might be thinking of doing in the future. Stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So before we get into this, uh, go into the comments, let me know, are there any books that you've been speculating on? Are there any that you're, you're looking to get into or ones that you just like to hoard? You know, uh, let me know in the comment section. There are definitely books uh, outside of just the speculation side of things that I do like to just have multiple copies of like X-Men 101, X-Men 12, and Amazing Spider-Man 129. Uh, so just let me know, are there any books that are like that for you? So with that, I'm gonna get into this package here and then I'll talk about why I like this book so much and how that might help you with speculating on your own books in the future. Now, if you recognize this package, <laughs> this was the, uh, the box that I showed in my video, maybe like two videos ago, where I had received a uh, package with a comic that was not packaged well, and I use this as an example of one that was packaged well. Uh, this was from Frank's Comics on Instagram, and you can see already, just looking inside, there are multiple thick pieces of cardboard in here, so you know they'll protect this comic. So as I'm getting into this, maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how I like to speculate on books, because I've mentioned this maybe in some other videos, uh, but I speculate a little bit differently than I think a lot of other people that are that are buying books for quote speculation. A lot of people when they're when they're speculating on a book, what they're talking about is buying a book that's in dollar bins or, or really low priced books, and then waiting for some event to happen for that book to pop, and then uh, you know selling that book. So. I'm also generally looking for things like popular characters or some type of event to impact that book, but I don't really buy like the dollar bin type books, that kind of thing, because for me, there's another level of risk that comes with that. And that risk is you end up with your house full of comics that are only worth a dollar. And so uh, if, that, if that speculation doesn't ha come true, then you've got just a bunch of dollar books and they take up a lot of space and you may never really be able to get rid of them. And so what I like to do is I like to buy established keys that I think have a lot of room on them. Uh, because as we've seen with countless other books this year, you can buy established keys and have them go up multiple times. For example, uh, Avengers 8 with the first appearance of Kang. That was a book that a year ago uh, I had a 7.5, 7, 7.5 7, I had listed for months at maybe $1,100, nobody wanted it, and now that book in a 7.5 is $3,500, $4,000, something like that, and just because Kang showed up on screen in uh, the, the Loki TV show. So you can have very big gains, big multiples on books that are already established keys and not have to get something that's in the dollar bin. because. That established key you can still sell relatively easily if whatever you were speculating on didn't happen that book still has that inherent value it's still avengers 8 or it's still whatever key that is and so there's lots of people that will want that book maybe you don't make a bunch of money on it or whatever and you sell it for what you bought it but you still can sell it relatively easily but if you have a whole bunch of dollar bin books those are not easy to sell. <laughs> so uh, you'll likely be stuck with them if that speculation doesn't happen. All right, so this is the book that I picked up. And if you've watched my other unboxing videos, you've probably seen me get this one a few times. And this is Batman number 181. And so this is the first appearance of Poison Ivy. This was graded at a 3.5 with a centerfold. Uh, I paid $4.25 for it. It was on a claim sale and I, I made an offer and he countered at $4.25 and I accepted. So uh, this is the first appearance of Poison Ivy and like he says on there, uh, it has the centerfold which is very important uh, just to note with this book because a lot of times that centerfold is missing. And so now uh, with this book, I now have five copies <laughs> of this one. So I've got uh, four more right here. So now I have 
one that's about a 5-0 with a centerfold, one that's a 3-5 with a centerfold, a 2-5, and then a 2-0 and a 3-5 that don't have the centerfold. So basically like a qualified 2-0 and a qualified 3-5. So the first thing I do, like I like I generally do when I when I get a raw book, is I do like to check that the pages are all there and that the centerfold is present. Um, like I've, I've mentioned before, no matter how much you, you trust a seller, you should always check just because mistakes can happen and you want to make sure that you're you're getting what you pay for and then I can also because I'm going to do that I can show you what the centerfold looks like so you know what to look for so this is the book out of the mylar looks nice you know I'd, I'd say the grade seems accurate to me um, and so this is a your standard silver age book so it's going to have 36 pages that's each side of the page So there's eight pages in, and then we've got the centerfold. We check to make sure it's attached, and it is. And so this is what that centerfold looks like. It's Batman and Robin. It's on this, you know, this green and purple background. And just a lot of people ripped it out and probably put it on their walls. And so that's why it's usually, or not usually, but that's why it is often missing. All right, and then there's the back cover. and. Everything looks good with this book. It's it's all there, centerfold is there. Uh, I didn't see anything that looked like obvious color touch or anything like that, because that's definitely something to also look for with this book, because it does have this, uh, this reddish orange cover that, uh, like I've mentioned before, is very susceptible to color rub. And so you will have the potential for someone to want to fill in that, uh, that if there's some color rub on there, uh, fill that in with marker or pen or, or something like that. So, um, but but this one you know, looks fine, happy with this book. So then the question is, why am I buying so many copies of this book? And no, it is not because I think DC is undervalued. I know there are plenty of people out there that think that because Marvel has gotten so expensive that DC is undervalued and it's primed to go up. I, I just, I don't feel that way. Uh, I think that until DC gets its act together with its movie universe and, and everything else, uh, I think that the books are just going to generally remain kind of stagnant. Now, that doesn't mean that I think there's no strength anywhere in DC. I definitely think there are pockets of strength in DC. For example, Green Lantern, because of the HBO Max, the Green Lantern core show that's coming up. And I think Batman keys are always good to pick up because Batman is just, that's their big property. I mean, that's, I mean, you've got Superman as well, but Batman is uh, where Spider-Man is the king on Marvel side, I'd say Batman is the king on the DC side. Uh, then I think Aquaman is another good one to start picking up because uh, with Jason Momoa, that character has gotten so much more popular. Um, I talked to one of my, my friends about that and he said Aquaman just generally used to be kind of a joke. <laughs> and so he's definitely gotten a lot more popular. I, I think I treated a lot like Thor. Thor was a character that really wasn't all that popular, but with him in the MCU, he has gained a lot of popularity and you've seen a lot of moves in the prices of Thor keys. And then fitting into that uh, Batman key segment, I've got Harley Quinn. Uh, I think she is just an incredible uh, character to, to invest in. You know, I've got my first appearance of Harley Quinn back there, out of continuity. Uh, and then going along with Harley Quinn, we've got Poison Ivy. And uh, because she is, as you can see on uh, that one back there, she's on the cover with Harley Quinn on Harley Quinn's first appearance. She has been tied with Harley Quinn from the beginning. So let's go through the reasons why I like this book. So first one is I am just in general a Batman fan. I like buying Batman keys and this is just a great one. Uh, so even if I'm stuck with these, <laughs> if, if for some reason I can't get rid of them or prices don't go up or prices drop, not the end of the world to me because uh, these are books that I like. Number two is that this is her actual first appearance. So I have mentioned that before with a lot of Batman villains, their first appearances are in the golden age. And so you often get first appearances quote in the silver age where it's the first time that character appears in the silver age. This is true with the Riddler, with Penguin, with Scarecrow, uh, but with Poison Ivy, this is actually her first appearance. This is her real first appearance. And there aren't a lot of big Batman villains 
uh, that have their first appearances in the Silver Age. You've got a number of kind of like the campy villains that are in there. So you've got villains like Calendar Man, Kite Man, Polka Dot Man, Cat Man. They have their first appearances in the Silver Age because I'm not counting the Cat Man from the Golden Age. Uh, but they have their first appearances in the Silver Age. But the big two that have their first appearances in the Silver Age, their, are the real first appearances are Mr. Freeze in Batman 121 and then Poison Ivy in Batman 181. And so those are two of the big characters to get, but I generally feel like Mr. Freeze has kind of been in a holding pattern for a long time. Whereas I think there's a lot of potential in the future for Poison Ivy. Now, the third thing that I really like about this book is that it has a lot of just inherent value, built-in value, even at the low grades. And that's something that's very important to me when I'm buying books that I am speculating on. I just talked about that in one of my prior videos about Batman 251, where that book carries a lot of value even in the low grades. There's a lot of demand for it in any condition, and the same thing is true here. So when a book carries a lot of value in those low grades, the advantages are it makes me more confident in making a purchase when maybe I can't see a book clearly to grade it myself, like when I'm buying a book on Instagram, because even if, say, the person overgrades the book or something like that, I have some room with that book because the value is still very strong as the grade drops. It's also just important to me because then if I need to sell the book, move the book, it has a lot of value regardless of grade, and so then I can turn that into something else. And so as an example for this, a 2.0 sold on September 18th for $498, and a 2.0 had sold for about 600 a few months prior to that, and a 1.0 sold on May 22nd for 350. And now that was in kind of like peak comic prices, so maybe that's come down a little bit, but still very strong sales for this book, even in low grades. And that is also true when they're missing the centerfold. It's very similar to the Marvel value stamp with Hulk 181, also talked about that, where there are certain books that retain a lot of value, even though they're a qualified grade book. And this is one of those books that does that as well. So for this book, uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, I paid $425, I think it was $433 with shipping, it was like $8 shipping, but with that 2.0 selling for $498, this is definitely better than a 2.0, and so I felt very comfortable buying that book. So that's another important thing just for me, so maybe something to consider when you're purchasing books like this, is that I do like to make sure I have some buffer with that book in case the price drops, especially with a book I'm speculating on, because if it ends up dropping in price, I want to still have some room so that I can get out of it without losing money. Uh, so that's just something I always consider whenever I'm picking up a book like this is that I'm not just buying it at any price. I am considering what price I'm buying it to give myself a little bit of protection on that book. Now, the fourth thing that I really like about Poison Ivy is the tie to Harley Quinn. So I mentioned that a little bit already, but she is tied to Harley Quinn a lot now. You've got the cartoon, so there's the cartoon that's on HBO right now, and that I think has really, really helped bring uh, Poison Ivy more into the forefront, getting it in front of people that maybe weren't as familiar with that character. So you've got that cartoon that has gotten really popular. Uh, you've also got the comic book, the 2019 uh, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy miniseries, so comic book where they're right there together. You've got lots of artists that love drawing these characters because she's an attractive character, just like Harley Quinn, and so that, that's a draw for people that like collecting the, the books, collecting the art, and that also seems to be a positive for the artists that like to draw the characters. Now, one artist that I just wanna spotlight because I, I really like her art, and so I wanted to show a couple of these that she's done with Poison Ivy, and if I pronounce it wrong, I apologize, but it's Rachta Lynn, it's at Rachta Lynn on Instagram, and I'll put her uh, Instagram information somewhere over here and probably in the description as well um, but I'm gonna I'll throw a couple of her pieces of art up there that she's done and one of the reasons I really like it is that she draws in an anime style and I am a huge anime fan uh, if you message me and want some recommendations on anime I can definitely give some some of the best that I've watched in the last uh, couple years have been uh, made in abyss I would check that one out promise Neverland and gets run with the wind if you like running stuff, uh, but awesome. So uh, those are just my, my quick recommendations, but 
I really like anime and I like that she kind of blends that anime drawing style with the comic book character. So uh, I definitely recommend checking her work out. And then the last thing that I, I really liked with this book was that recently there was a 9-8 sale that was huge for this book. And I talked about that with the Amazing Fantasy 15 with the 9-6 that sold for 3.6 million and how we have now been seeing upticks in the prices of the lower grade books. So back on November 22nd of last year of 2020, there was a 9-8 sale of this book for $90,000. Now that was a huge sale. First time that I'd seen a 9-8 sell of this book. There are three 9-8s out there. So it's relatively rare in that grade. I mean, it's from 1966, but there are three of them out there in a 9-8. And there's actually a comment in the chat for that Amazing Fantasy 15 video that I was uh, talking with one of the commenters where they had a differing opinion that they thought that the high grade sales, these really high end sales, shouldn't impact the prices of the lower grade books, that it shouldn't bring up the values of the lower grade books. And now I do disagree. And so I just wanna mention, so this is why I think that those high grade, those really expensive sales do impact the lower grade prices and start to bring those up. And so the biggest reason is the amount of attention that it brings to that book because you could have people that have never heard of that book before, aren't aware of that book, but then there's some massive sale where you have a sale of $90,000, for example, for this, that then that potentially gets coverage in the press. That gets people talking about it. And then if you have somebody that say, has a bunch of money to invest in something and they go, well, maybe comic books are something that I should invest in. It seems like they have a lot of value. Maybe that's someplace that I can put my money. And so it just takes a few people to get interested in buying these books to really start to impact prices. And that's because a lot of times these books are selling at auctions. And with an auction, you just have to have two people going back and forth and that price can just keep going up and up and up. It doesn't have to be 50 or 100 people or anything like that, just two people. And so it doesn't take a lot to really impact those prices if you have some big event that draws people's attention to that book and to that character. Now, one of the other points that the commenter brought up is that the person that's spending that kind of money is in a different market than the person that's spending $5,000 or $500. And yes, that's true. It's definitely a different market. However, like I said, it brings the attention to that book. And so even if you're not spending 90,000 or 60,000 or 10,000 on that book, you saw that big sale and you're like, oh, that, you know, whatever your budget is, you're like, oh, that could be something I could invest in. What's the one that I can afford? And so that's why I think that that does uh, still bring in people to bid on those other books. Like I said before, because there are just a limited supply of these books, if you have more people bidding, prices are just going to naturally go up. My general point is that I do think that these big sales have an impact because of the attention that they bring to those books regardless of the grade because all kinds of people see those sales and it can draw their attention to that book. Then my, my last point is just that because of the increased popularity in characters like Harley Quinn, the popularity of that show, uh, I think that there is a good potential that DC will try to incorporate Poison Ivy more into their properties in the future. If they don't, that's fine. Like I said, it is still a major key and so I like owning that book. I think it's a great book to buy and invest in and sell, that kind of thing. So I don't have any problem buying it even if they don't do that, but I think that because of the recent popularity with that character, there's a good chance that that's something they could decide to invest in in the future. Now for some general tips for when you're speculating on a book, uh, and I'll, for this example, I'll, I'll use Poison Ivy, but if they do decide to reintroduce Poison Ivy into a movie or a show, something like that, what's the process you should take with this? So the most important thing with speculating on books really is timing. Uh, timing is critical when trying to maximize returns on books. The important thing is to get in relatively early. Buy the books relatively early. Uh, definitely before that first trailer comes out if, it's, if the character's gonna be in a movie. Uh, so I would generally say six to 12 months before a movie you want to be into that book. At least six to 12 months before a movie's coming out. Now, when do you sell the book? If that's your goal, sell it when that first trailer comes out. That is definitely the time to sell these books. That is 
what we've seen over and over and over again. Uh, Bryce Comics did a video on it a while ago showing it with multiple examples. Uh, we saw that with Shang-Chi, with Special Marvel Edition 15. We saw that with Eternals, uh, with the Eternals keys. When that first trailer came out, that is when the prices spike the most. That is when you should be selling those books, if that's your goal. So the next thing is don't get greedy. If you keep seeing those prices go up, just stick to your plan, sell the book when that trailer comes out and move forward. Don't keep holding on because it will eventually come back down. It happens again and again. So make a plan, stick to it, sell the book when that trailer comes out and then just move forward. And even if it continues to go up, just be fine with it that you, you made your money on the book and go on and buy something else. But don't get stuck looking back. Uh, just sell the book and move forward. Now, if you want to buy back into the book, uh, I would recommend just waiting until the movie has come out and then it's been out for about two months. Uh, just watch the prices and see as they continue to drop. Now, especially if the character is one that they look like they're going to continue to use moving forward, then you could maybe follow the same trend again, buy the book, sell it in the next trailer, and then continue forward. But the general rules are, if you're going to try speculating on some books, buy before that first trailer comes out, sell when the trailer comes out, and don't be greedy. Stick to whatever plan you had. You don't need to make the absolute maximum on a book. That will almost always be a recipe for you holding a bunch of books. And so just take the win and move forward. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.